How's it going, everyone? Hump day today. A lot of interesting idiots in the news today. Four stories. Just going to gloss over them real quick just to give an overview. Kamala Harris's controversial niece, Mina, deletes tweet, assuming Boulder Gunman was white because he was taken into custody alive. I talked about her in a story several weeks ago, perhaps a month ago, where she's trying to profit off the Harris name. The Atlanta shooting was not even a week ago. Violent white men are the greatest threat to our country. That tweet came in at 6.59 p.m. on the 22nd, you see here. Next day, around noon, on the 23rd, I deleted a previous tweet about the suspect in the Boulder shooting. I made an assumption based on his being taken into custody alive and the fact that the majority of mass shootings in the U.S. are carried out by white men. I think we all know that that's not why she made the assumption, but statistically, she isn't incorrect. So if I were to make a statement about whatever race and associate that with whatever crime, it would be believable, simply because I'm not known for being a piece of shit or a racist. The problem is, and think about this, imagine how, and this is the funny part, this is how I think about it. Let me scroll down and let you see some of the, there she is there. Let me scroll down here and show you some of the replies to her tweet. The problem being, imagine this scenario, Kamala's old white husband being what he is, that whole side of the family being white, some of them profiteering off of her getting into office, like that one that's supposedly a model now. I feel like we have a word for rushing to making assumptions about someone accused of a crime based on racial trends and crime. Maybe you can do better than assume things about tragic events for retweets. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Way too much to ask. How oh, these tweets came in just 20, 30 minutes after, after her apology. Apology may be worse than the original tweet. This cleanup is quite self-owned. The, the funny thing is, I think about family gatherings. I'd be willing to bet that given Emhoff being married to Harris, what his leanings are, and that's probably safe to assume, oh, oh are we doing the, the Mina Harris thing? But safe to assume that a majority of people within the M. Hoff clan are Democrats as well. Perhaps some are conservative, but imagine the hilarity of a family gathering with that whole racist side of the family <laughs> having to break bread with all of those white folk. Even though those individuals may be Democrat in nature, still, the hatred is still probably there. If they say one wrong thing, imagine one drunken wrong thing at the Thanksgiving dinner table. Oh, well, it's because you're a racist. You're a misogynist. Oh, oh no, I don't care if you're married to my dark-skinned aunt. Your whole family is a racist because you're white. And whites are terrible. <laughs> so that was the whole thing I thought about during this. It's just like my cynical side thought about how family gatherings must be when you have individuals who think everyone white is evil, but yet the other half of the family is white as well. <laughs> All right. So that's one. Instead of assuming things based on race, what I always assume, and this is what I talked about in my video yesterday, is that there's some mental health component when you see crimes like this. This here's an AP story, and this is about the Boulder shooting. A law enforcement official briefed on the shooting, said the suspect's family told investigators that they believed the loser shooter suffering some type of mental illness, including delusions. Relatives described times when the terrorist told them people were following or chasing him, which they said may have contributed to the violence, the official said. The official was not authorized to speak publicly and spoke to the AP on a condition of anonymity. After the shooting, the detectives went to the home. They found his sister-in-law, who told them that he had been playing around with a weapon and she thought it looked like a machine gun about two days earlier, according to an affidavit. 
No one answered the door Tuesday at the home, which is believed to be owned by the suspect's father. They said here, when he was a senior in 2018, I'm down here now, he was found guilty of assaulting a fellow student in class after knocking him to the floor, then climbing on top of him and punching him in the head several times. It goes on to say, he got up in classroom, walked over to the victim, cold cocked him in the head. The terrorist complained that the student had made fun of him, called him racial names a few weeks earlier. A police report on the incident said the victim was bloodied and vomiting after the assault. The terrorist was suspended from school and sentenced to probation and community service. One of his former high school teammates said after losing a match in practice, <laughs> he let out a scream of invectives, yelling he would kill everyone. The coach then kicked him off the team for the outburst. He was one of those guys with a short fuse. Once he gets mad, it's like something takes over and it's not him. There's no stopping him at that point. I had read in another article that this guy that he got up and punched was potentially some kind of bully. He was calling him some not so nice things. So if that's the case, then good. Punch a bully in the face. I have no problems with that. You see what they're doing here though. Obviously, it's what always happens. They dig through the past, try to find logic, try to find reasons, try to find the red flags, what were missed. So rather than assuming things about race, sometimes it's obvious, like in the case of Mina and some of these other individuals, which I'll talk about shortly. I always question, the first question out of my mouth is never, what was his race? It's always, what's the mental health history? And by and large, this is what I talked about yesterday, there's something there. Before I had started to record, this story was that they were going to do this, that they were staunch, 100%. Democratic Senators Duckworth and Hirano back off ultimatum to block any Biden nominees who aren't minorities until more Asian Americans are picked to serve on the cabinet. Now, this was a definite. Now, this shows you how things change overnight. It's early morning now, Wednesday, when I'm recording this, but as of Tuesday night, this was a definite. Senator Tammy Duckworth has backed down from her public threats not to vote for Joe Biden's straight white nominees. Yesterday, she warned that until Biden increased the representation of Asian American, Pacific Islander representation at senior levels of the government, she would be voting against some of his selections for cabinet and judicial nominees. Now, let's be clear. Whenever you hear an individual, and I've said this many times, especially in regard to the NAACP, it's the advancement of colored people. Well, we're all colored in our own way, I guess. But why is it that an organization like the NAACP only hires black people to run their organization? They only put those people in positions of power, and their goal always seems to be black people. So why call it the advancement of colored people if it's really just for black people? That's what they always talk about, about naming things in an inconspicuous way to hide your true intent. So here, Duckworth is saying, well, I'm not going to vote for straight white nominees until there's more diversity. Oh, oh, okay, diversity, diversity. Ooh, diversity's our strength, meh, 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 meh. But the veil will always slip if you just let them keep talking. Warned that until Biden increased his representation of American, Asian, Pacific Islander representation, so that's what she really wants. Just like BLM and any individuals that go along with that. And you can point to hundreds of organizations out there that are comprised of similar looking people. That could be racial, could be sex-based, could be gender, could be religious. Whenever you have individuals out there looking out for what they'll refer to and what I've said many times as their people, then you have individuals that I think have racist tendencies. I'm not going to say that they're full-on racist, but I've always said that life is so boring if you just hang around similar type people. And that's diversity of anything I just mentioned, but also diversity of thought as well. Why would I want to go through my life in a circle of people that are just like me? It's kind of boring, right? Kind of a boring life. Imagine this woman here. All she does is sit around all day long, bitch and moan about Asians. 
there needs to be more Asians, more Asian this, more Asian that. It seems to me that individuals who are of that mindset, it eventually leads to that kind of derangement we see in people. Diversity as a strength, mm, diversity of thought more so, obviously. But I've always been one that's felt like the best person for the job should get the job. Diversity is overrated in that sense. The weakening of our nation over time, I think, has on so many levels been because we have people who only care about what people look like and not what they bring to the table. But like a coward and like a racist that she probably is, and I feel sorry for her. I hope she has more people in her life that don't look like her and don't think like her to help kind of snap her out of this. But I kind of doubt that's the case because who thinks like this? Backing down like the coward she is, Duckworth realized she didn't have a leg to stand on with her threats. And we'll wrap it up real quick with our favorite goons, BLM. BLM is back again. Trap protesters inside of Wegmans in Rochester on the first anniversary of Daniel Prude's death. If you recall, he was the individual. You may have seen the footage if you haven't. Check it out. Spit hood put over his head. It was a cold night in Rochester. He was walking around in his underwear. And again, it comes back to what I referred to earlier. Mental health issues, right? How are we helping individuals with these issues? How are we helping individuals like Mr. Prude here not become a statistic or not have them end up in a situation where they end up shooting and killing people? I know it's totally random. I know it's pie in the sky stuff to hope that we can eliminate these kind of things. But it would be great if the mental health system could be fortified like our election system was fortified but it would be great if there were ways to help more people. And we often hear a lot of the funding being cut. And during this 14-day, one-year lockdown that we've been under, semi-lockdown, mental health has been on the decline in so many people. And I talked about a story about youth, teens, seeing their numbers increase, sometimes up to 100% in terms of the raw data. Percentage increase in the number of individuals having overdoses, calls to crisis hotlines and things like that. Are we breeding future Colorado shooters? Are we breeding future individuals like Daniel Prude? How can we help them is always my concern. Not race or what have you, it's how do we help individuals like this get the help that they need? <laughs> Look at that old woman. She didn't even notice. Here's a clip from the other side of it. It says, same thing, but it's just shot from a different angle. There's one black person. And this is, if you've seen, if you've seen stuff of mine in the past, you know I'm always clowning these losers of Black Lives Matter. Black live, black live, black live, black live, black live. This one wasn't even black. This one at least is black. Look at the cameraman, he isn't even black. Imagine being in Black Lives Matter, how great it must be, how great your messaging was, that you were able to manipulate weak whites into doing your legwork, to doing your heavy lifting. They're out there being the ones that are banging on windows, sometimes getting arrested in this case. It looked like it wasn't serious right here. But you're just kicking back with your feet up laughing. God, how pathetic are these white people? The lies, the BS spewed by BLM, the you can be an accomplice, as was said at that recent Grammy ceremony. Look at all of these accomplices out there, out there putting their personal freedoms is potentially being arrested on the line for an organization that only cares about black people and only cares about ushering in Marxism, communism, whatever it is that they're all about. Those Black Lives Matter folk must be out there like Ferris Bueller. 
they bought it. <laughs> so that's all I got, everybody. A lot of stupidity going on. So much in one day. It's always so hard to trim this stuff down. There's a lot more stories out there of a lot more idiots, and I'll be here to laugh at them. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Have a good rest of your week.